E... It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Realist Puppet in the game. Today we're creating a vocal template in Pro Tools for low latency recording with Autotune. This template utilizes the famous Autotune print track recording workflow used by legendary artists like T-Pain, Chris Brown, and many more. I'm gonna buy you a drink. I'm gonna take you home with me. I got money in the bank. Shout it what you think about that. I'll be in a great Cadillac. Like my friend Nash Overstreet is going to break down every step from scratch. So let's open up Pro Tools and create our low latency auto-tune template. All right, so I produced a beat to my cover of Buy You a Drink by T-Pain. To start making a template, to start getting vocals ready, we're going to consolidate this all into a two track. That'll free up some CPU and get rid of all these plugins I used to make these. And it definitely helps only dealing with a stereo audio track. Let's select all the tracks, hold shift and option, and you can change the output on these all at the same time by holding those buttons. New track, stereo aux track, great. I'm gonna call this mix bus. I like to make a little master of it so it's you know got some good gain to it. Everything's nice and compressed when you're hearing your vocals and you're recording to them. Let's just make sure the limiter's got this nice and squashed. Now we can consolidate this auxiliary track into an audio track. So now we can hide all the other tracks we've been working with. We can make them inactive using no CPU with any plugins or anything like that. This is going to come in so handy for tracking vocals. So let's start off with a vocal track to record into. One mono audio track. Great. Let's name this record track. Now I've got this coming back one and two because I can get my latency all the way down since we are not having to use any latency causing buffer speed for plugins. So now when I listen to myself in here, I'm going to hear it right back. No latency. I like to add a couple swirls to my vocals like reverb. Let's see. We're going to send an aux to that and delay. So we'll name each one of those accordingly. The delay, personally, you can tailor this to your taste, but when I'm creating a template, I'll put the delay to around 23-ish. The reverb, I'll take down to about 14. Now we've got these reverbs and delay sending, which will come in handy later. After the record track, which goes directly back to the headphones, I'm going to create a vocal lead. Now this track, I'm gonna send out to a vocal bus. Now this is where I'm going to process this. This vocal lead goes into here. I'm going to drag this reverb down, drag this delay down. So it'll also sound just like the one I'm hearing in my headphones. So I like to separate my verses, my pre's and my choruses. So that way, if I'm editing, if I'm comping, everything stays in its realm, does its job. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, say three times. We don't need these. Now I'm going to rename this verse vocal pre-vocal, chorus vocal. Let's do chorus vocal too, because sometimes you got overlapping vocals. So now all these will feed into the lead vocal bus. So to cut down on CPU power and what plugins are being used on just the bus, I'm going to add my favorite vocal plugin, Nectar 4. And this is vocal suite, so this takes care of compression, DSing, the EQ. There's a lot of multi-band compression going on. It does a little of everything, and it just keeps me having the ability to use only one plugin for my vocals to hear them back nicely. All right, I like the sharp and bright preset. We'll go with that. So now I've got one vocal kind of plugin suite going. We've got delay and we've got verb being sent to these. So now we have to assign a delay. Which I like H delay. It's nice, easy. I'll do a little lo-fi, ping pong, roll off the highs, and then reverb. I love the stock reverb in Pro Tools. Deverb as is, I don't even change anything. So now, anything I record on this record track, I can drag onto these vocals. They will go right through the vocal bus, sound great right away. I'm gonna create a couple double tracks now that will also go into the lead vocal bus. Two audio tracks, call them dubs. I like to take them left and right. I even sometimes will separate them visually by putting the vocal bus on top of them. Then I'll take these doubles, 
and holding Option Shift to do the same thing to both of them at one time. Hit new track, dubs bus. That way, if I want to compress them separately or do like a trick to the doubles or EQ them a little bit differently, we're good. Then I don't even have to do the verb and delay on that. I will just send this into the lead vocal bus. Now, all of these, even the bus here, are gonna go back into this. I can control the whole volume of this. I can change the doubles by changing this volume here. The delays and verbs volumes are set with these sends. I always like a nice little affected vocal in my sessions. So we're gonna create a vocal that says effects vocal. I put a little filter on this. Just like up here, we create these vocals. We send one into a bus, call it effects bus. Great. On the bus, we can add a filter. Let's add the main American EQ, male filtered vocal preset, easy. Again, we drag the delay and the reverb down to this track. And now we're not taking any more plugins up there. Sometimes filtered vocals can get a little all over the place with their volume. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a squash compressor on that. All right, cool. The way I like to do my backgrounds, a lot of the times is I'll do two left and two right, like a four stack of whatever part I'm doing. If it's a low octave, if it's a high octave, if it's a harmony part in between background parts that are like answers, call and response type of things, they will usually be four, sometimes three, sometimes one center, a left and a right. I like to create them in bundles of four. If I want to delete or hide one when I'm doing three stacks, it's easy. I will create a new track. Uh, I'll create four new tracks. BGV one, we'll call it. Cool. Now, left, right, left, right. I pan them accordingly. Again, option shift, and I can control all their outputs to be doing the same thing at the same time. A routing of them to an aux track, BGV1. So now they're all going to here at full volume, and this controls the volume of all of them at the same time. I don't have to worry about these up here. Let's take this background and put it into an overall BGV bus. That way I can create multiples of these and they'll all feed into this. Unlike the lead, I'm not gonna put a vocal suite on the background bus itself for background one. I'm gonna put it on the background bus for all of them. That way you can control the volume here. You can have as many background tracks and buses as you want. It's not gonna take up extra CPU. I do like to go into here and take any compression off because when you're changing levels going in, it always changes the ratio and might cloud up that mix in that bus. So now that we have that, we can duplicate this, say three more. So right on down the row, you see what's happened here. We do have to go in and change the inputs and outputs. So for BGVs, let's see. What's up, cat? Okay, so we're gonna name them accordingly. BGV one through four, go in here, option shift, change their output. Um, let's just make something up, 1920, sure. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you concur? For BGV three, let's change all their outputs to bus five and six, just to make you guys crazy. BGV input, change that to bus five and six, and rinse and repeat. All right, option shift, change the output to a bus seven and eight. Change the input on the BGV bus to seven and eight. All of these BGV buses are already routed to this because we did that first one first and then we duplicated it once it was routed. Makes it nice and easy. Now the BGV bus needs delay and reverb. Let's just take it from this effects one so it's still the same. And we're just option dragging. This bus, I always leave at zero. And I use these individuals to change the background parts volume. Effects bus, I like my session to hover around like negative 15. Dubs bus, I like that to hover around eight or nine. The lead vocal, I keep it around 13. Um, these all stay at zero. And then the record track stays at zero. So that when I record a vocal and I drag it down to a track, it's coming through at a good volume. Do you want to learn the industry standard software for music production, recording, and engineering? and know exactly how tracks get created from start to finish. It's time to meet your new Pro Tools instructors because this is the Pro Tools course. 
This three hour course breaks down every step in the music production process using Pro Tools, like producing beats with MIDI, loops, real instruments, and samples. Setting up a vocal template, recording, and adding processing. Plus advanced production tips, automation, Pro Tools shortcuts, and workflow hacks. Then we add our final mixing and mastering chains and export our track all within one Pro Tools session. We're literally creating a song together from scratch and sharing decades of Pro Tools knowledge along the way. Get the Pro Tools course now only at wholeloops.com. I've messed around with this and compared it to the instrumental, which I usually put at around negative 18.5. And what all these lower numbers are making it possible to do is if you've ever sang in a studio where you can't hear yourself enough and you're like, turn my vocal up, it's not loud enough, I can't hear myself, everything's too loud. The quieter they are, the louder my voice is. And then when I turn the overall volume up, I can really hear myself. And then the track is already at a place where I like it in relation to that volume. You'll notice there's no master track. I'll create one real quick just to do it. I don't ever use a master while recording because it adds latency. So when you're recording, turn the master off, do not use that. Before I start doing vocals, I have this record track ready to record me, but I personally like to record through auto-tune so I can hear myself tuned and I can also not have to go hand tune it later. I don't even have to use auto-tune plugins on the tracks. It's just going through it. It's printing to its own audio track and it saves me a lot of CPU so I can keep listening at like the 32 super low latency. What I'll do is duplicate this track because we do want the same kind of track with the reverb and the delay, but I'm gonna create an additional auxiliary track. Let's call it AT vocal input for auto-tune. So I'm gonna take the output of this track and route it to whatever, bus one. Then the record track here, I'm gonna change the input to bus one. This track is recording me at all times. I will never hear it unless I'm recording this track down here and it's hearing what's on this. So if I add auto-tune, to this track, I'm going through auto-tune, but it's recording right here permanently. And you hear it through auto-tune. Now, I still have to get the key right. I still gotta change the format or classic. Tip though, classic is low latency mode, basically. It's the old algorithm. It's auto-tune four or five sound, which was famous by T-Pain, but it just really has the lowest latency. So if you're recording through it and you're needing to hear yourself without too much delay, classic mode. I like a pretty heavy tune. A lot of people though use 20. This is a T-Pain song. We're not gonna use zero like he does, but let's go with like nine. All right, and then we figure out the key and we'll be good to go. All right, it's an A. Da. Okay. Change our input volume real quick so the mic doesn't blow this thing up. Cool, cool, cool. Now I can get right up on it. And because I've changed my stereo tracks volume to negative 18.5 and the vocal level is like negative 13 or so, when I play this back, I can crank the volume, hear myself nice and loud, and then this volume does not blow me up but it sounds good. Cool. This is the auto-tune record track, so let's just name it. If I wanna do something without that auto-tune on, I can just switch to this one. It'll record raw vocals with no tune. That's useful for people who may not know how to sing into auto-tune to make it trigger it correctly. So this lets you go in after the fact, tune it how you need to. You can put auto-tune on that track if you wanna hear through it without printing to it. Option drag it. They're hearing auto-tune, but you're keeping the raw vocal. I'm gonna take that off though, just because I don't like that on there. And it uses more plugins. We arm the AT Vokes track. This little eye right here is input monitoring. So if it's not recording, you don't hear me. But if you have this on and it's not recording, you still hear yourself. You hit record, yeah, it's capturing you, but you didn't have to hear yourself on mute beforehand. So I like that. All right, let's go. 
Baby girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you, let me buy you a train I'm not in pain <laughs> But you know me Alright, so let's say we want to put this down onto a vocal track Drag it on the verse vocal Let's listen back Baby girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you, let me buy you a train I'm So it's already going through delay, reverb, nectars, vocal processing suite It sounds great I hear it great when I want to sing. Um. All right, let's do the chorus to show you how to use this with doubles and harmonies too. Yeah, I'm buy you a drink. Then I'm gonna take you home with me. I got money in the bank. Oh. So I only like the first line. So I'll pull just that down, and then I'll keep going. I'm buy you a yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take you home with me. I got money in the bank. All right, I like that. So I'll edit this down, slide this piece down. I'm gonna take you home with me. I got money in the bank. Shout out what you think about that. I'll be in a gray cat. We in the bed like. All right, cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna double these. I take the AT Vox track. I don't even worry about the Vox input track. That's as is, where it is. I'm gonna take this down to the doubles. Now, when I record something, it's right here, I can drag it right down onto these. So let's double a certain bit of the chorus. I'm gonna buy you a drink. I'm gonna take you Leave that part off. I got money in the bank. So I only like this first line, take this down. Let's go ahead and triple it while we're there. I'll be in the gray Cadillac. Cool. Dragging these down. Great. Now we've got four. The other thing I really recommend for doing this type of template is to make these into groups. Let's take all of these. Hit Command G. Call it BGV1. All of these, let's call that BGV2. Don't make the bus part of the group. That way you can change these volumes and they will go into the bus less hot or more hot. I'll put it about the same volume. Let's do the second part of the harmony. All right, let's do a low octave. So because we have all these BGV buses controlling four stacks at once, for these background vocals that are in between the main lyric, I want to add like a little flangey phasery effect. And I can do that with one plugin on each stack, which is great. Let's just type in flanger. So let's drag that flanger by option dragging it down to the next stack and then also down to the low octave. You can even grab all these stacks. You can drag it above these. It's just really however you want to rearrange it. it. Makes it super nice and easy. The master fader up here is barely hitting halfway. It's not even. This is great for when you want to master your song. So you don't have it clipping, you don't have it in the red, you're not running out of headroom. When you get these volumes of the buses to where you like how they are compared to the lead vocal volume, I would say that's what you save your template as. So then you can just automatically do it. You're never worried about volumes or anything. We go save as template. You can install it in the system. There's a lot of categories you can do. I personally like to just select a location. Do not include media. That way the track won't be in your template. It'll just be the setup like you have it. Okay, and we can choose where we wanna save it. Now that we're done recording, let's turn the master fader back on, change playback engine speed, back up to the high one so it can take a lot of plugin power, and let's add a mastering plugin. We're gonna use God Particle on this, turn that volume back down or you're gonna blow your own head off. It is gonna be loud when it gets back to Unity volume. I'm gonna buy you a train. After your vocal session, you might want to turn this back into a full mixing session and get all the stems to your beat back. So we can do that by simply going down to this menu here in the bottom left corner and enabling all of our beat stems. 
taking the old mastering plugin off of our beat, giving you access to make little tweaks in the beat, adjustments in the vocal, or everything together as you master. I'ma buy you a drink. So there you have how to set up and record a vocal with your low latency auto-tune template. If you want to learn how to produce an entire song in Pro Tools from scratch, where me and Nash teach you everything in a comprehensive three plus hour course, I'll include links to that in the description below and catch you guys next time in another video.